Okay, so this is exam review part two. And, um, okay, I have um, some problems up here that are ready for us, and then we're going to go and grab some word problems after we do a few of these. So um, first I have a couple of warm-up problems for us. Um, so these, the directions are so important on an, an exam. I mean, of course you all know that, right? I mean, that goes without saying, but in particularly in mathematics it's almost like the only thing you really study in math is the directions because you want to know what they're asking you for but the rest of it you have to practice okay you're going to get nowhere unless you start with a problem and um, practice this stuff okay so the directions for this problem here these two would read simplify and so um We'll go ahead and do that. When it's like, when you're asked to simplify, that's going to mean doing uh, different things during the semester. But ultimately, it really is just putting an expression in its simplest form. Okay. And so, um, in this case, we really basically follow the order of operations, and then when we have nothing left to do from the order of operations, we're done. So what we start out here is by removing our parentheses by distributing these pro these uh, factors that are in the front of the parentheses. So, so we have 6a times a squared. So guys, uh, go ahead and chime in. What would 6a a squared be? We would have what? It would be 6a cubed. Yes, good job. And so 6a then plus, it's not plus though, it's multiplied by, right? Because we're distributing multiplication yeah. over this. Mm -hmm. So we would have 6 times 6. 36. 36, yeah, AB, A, B. good job, and then we move on to the next one, notice our parentheses are gone, so we can eliminate parentheses by using the distribution property, okay, so the, this would be A, B, and then plus 2, B, be very careful when you're distributing, these are pretty simple problems, but of course in the next one we'll have a negative, we have to distribute lots of times, um, especially when we start distributing into longer uh, expressions or longer polynomials, you really want to be careful to distribute thoroughly into whatever's in the parentheses, okay? So take your time on that. Draw the little lines like I did. It's okay to do that. Now, typically, after you distribute, you will have to check to see if you can combine like terms, which, look at that. We have an AB. If you need to see the 1 up there, do it. Put the 1. Okay, if it helps you get the problem correct, do it. Put it down. You know, make a little note for yourself. So 6a cubed does not combine with anything. We have 36 plus 1, so 37 ABs, right? So plus yeah. 37 AB and then plus 2B. Okay. Oh, let me do that. There we go. Plus 2B. Okay, and so this is done, okay? This is as simple as this is going to get. So let's do one more, and then we'll go on. So, um, <clears throat> okay, you guys, you, okay, Robert, are you there? Why don't you tell me this yeah. time? You tell me what to write here, okay? So for the first distribution, you tell me what will our new, our new terms are going to be. Uh, okay. Yeah. What's that? That would be. Look, remember this is a. Okay, this is. Let me before you start. Let me remind you of these rules from yesterday from our exponents. When we multiply straight across a to the m times a to the n, what do we do with the exponents? We're just multiplying straight across. We add them, right? We add those exponents together. Add them. Now, when you multiply, I mean, when you're raising a power to a power like this, right, and there's an exponential form inside parentheses with another exponent being raised again, right, that's when we multiply those two exponents, okay? So what we're doing here on a squared times a to the first power here is we're going straight across. This is kind of like having a squared times a to the first power. Okay, so that would be what, a to the 2 plus 1, or a cubed. Okay? Right. So this first one will be a cubed. Okay? 
So be careful mm -hmm. with that. And if you forget, if you forget this rule, you guys, you can kind of take these things one at a time and you can say, okay, what was A squared? A squared is this, right? And then I'm multiplying another A, right? And all together, what does that get me? A cubed, right? A to the third power. You see, you can always go back down to that definition of, of what an exponent does. So that does help a little bit, you know. So in the next one, though, A squared times B, that's just going to be A squared B, okay? Because they don't matter. The bases don't match. So now we move over to this guy. We're going to distribute a negative b squared into a plus b. Okay, so multiplying, right? So we have a negative term, right? It's going to turn negative a b squared. Notice I'm putting these guys in alphabetical order, okay? No matter what order that's in right there, I want it to be in a certain order, right? I want to have all alphabetical order for now, okay, if there's more than one variable. Okay, we have a negative times a positive now. So we have negative b squared times positive b. Next would be what? A negative b, and then the exponent will be 2 plus 1, right? We add them. Yes, good job. Now, are any of these like terms? Do any of these things have matching variable? Yeah, no. no, right? So this is done. Uh, no. Nope. No. No, they don't. See the a. You were probably looking at these guys. They don't. They don't match. A squared. The two a's have to both be squared, right? Or the two b's have to have the same thing. Mm -hmm. They both have to match. So this is done. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So. Let's go on to these guys. Now, these this next little group of problems. Let me scroll us down here. The next group of problems I have is from uh, solving equations. And uh, this is a good warm-up, working us up to the word problems that we're going to do in a little bit. And um, Okay, so uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, I did grab a few of those. Let me pull that down off of there. Okay, so... um. Let's see where I don't want to begin. I'm trying to make room to, to kind of keep it on there. Okay. Let's go here. All right. So let me write the directions. So our directions will read for these guys. It'll just say solve. When we go to solve equations, you want to make sure you can, you've simplified both sides of the equal sign. before. You don't start moving stuff to the either side of the equal sign, right? Not until... Everything, like your parentheses, you distributed and combined your like terms, that kind of thing. You want to make sure you simplify first. Okay, come on, give me my ink pen. Gotcha. So, um, good, good. All right. Let's see, why isn't it giving me my ink pen? It's misbehaving, guys, again. Okay. Oh, here we go. So, solve for X, or just really it's going to say solve if it's my test. Because the variable is the unknown thing. So you know you have to solve for x or y or whatever the variable is. So just like we did before in the expressions we simplified, we have to distribute to get rid of the parentheses. Again, I'm going to say, I'm going to write this on this side, okay? When you go to simplify with when you're using distribution, okay, simplifying parentheses, okay, mainly is, is the topic. You know, you're going to distribute, if you can, whatever it is to be distributed. Right after you distribute, you're going to check for combining like terms. These two things are going to just, you got to get used to them being said one after the other. So distribute and then combine like terms if possible. Okay? Because that's going to make life a lot easier if you remember to check to combine like terms. Okay. So, um, actually, I think I can do this. Maybe I can't do that. Okay. <laughs> I think I cannot do that. I thought it would let me split the thing, but it did not. Okay. That's going to confuse us. And there we are. Now we're back. Okay. So, okay. So, we'll have 7x minus 2x, right? I'm distributing a negative 2 into here. And now we'll have a look, negative times a negative 
positive 10, right? Equal, then 3x, mm -hmm. 3 times negative 2, negative 6. Minus 6. Minus 5x, right? Y'all got that? Any questions so far? Any questions? Uh, no, we're good. So far okay, so now got to combine like terms, right? Okay. What are the what are the like terms on the left side of the equal sign? The seven x and two x. Negative two, right? So, 2X. so really, when to combine them, I'm just going to take seven minus two and tack on an x, right? So seven minus two is five. Tack on that x. You see? Okay. And so let's see what I'm going to do here, guys. I'm going to uh, actually. I'm going to come right here, get rid of this, and I'm going to start writing the problem on the side, I guess. Just to give us, you know, more room. A little more room. Yeah, I mean, we need some room to do the problem, so. Um, actually, I could do it to the left of the problem, so. Okay. So, um, if you're watching the recording of this video, sorry about that. So, um, yeah, just bear with this. What did I do? See that? I keep, I don't know what I'm doing for this thing. Yes, we were discussing the ins and outs of the techno technologically um, lacking, or I don't know. Squad, right? Like, look, it's not like, it let me move it. It's so strange. Okay, it won't, like, let me take, I'll just keep working down from here. This is fine. So we have, what, 5x? Yeah, you can just go from right there. Yeah, y'all know where we are. Okay, so now what, 3x minus 5x, right? What's that going to be? Negative 2x. 2x. Yes. Good job. Watch your signs. Negative 2x. And then put your minus 6. Very good. Six. Watch those signs, guys. So now, now both sides are simplified, right? If I had just 5x plus 10 by itself and I was told to simplify it, I would say it's done, right? If I had negative 2x minus 6 by itself in, in a simplifying problem outside of an equation, I would say it's done. So now I can start moving. Now i got to do the process of isolating at x, right? So mm -hmm. we're going to move our x terms to one side and our constants to the other. And you guys are probably quite familiar with this already. But um, yeah. in case someone's not. So I'm going to go ahead and since 2x is subtracted, I'm going to add it to both sides. That's the inverse operation. So it will cancel here, right? I'm going to just combine them now. Okay, so I'll have a 7x plus 10, and my negative 6 is what's left on the right. So now I got that 7x there. I want to leave that there. I want my 10 to go over to the other side. So it's added, so I will subtract it from both sides. Okay, if at any point y'all get confused, please tell me, okay? That's where yeah, you're Because so if, you, if you do, there's someone else who's watching the video, the recording, who is confused too. And they need you to ask that question. So y'all will be the heroes. So, um, <laughs> so there's the answer. Okay, so what I've done here is I just took 7 and divided it, right? If it's multiplied, I'm going to divide it off on both sides. Okay, so that's how I got to this point. Are y'all good with that? Yeah, we're yep. good so far. Okay, good. All right, do we need to see another one of those, or can I go to this next section here? Um, for I me, think you can go on. Yeah, you can go on if you want. What's that? You can go on if you want. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, so let's go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. This is special, this section, okay? Notice, <clears throat> on in this little section, I have, it's a single fraction equal to a single fraction, okay? It's It might be full a fraction filled with things in the numerator or whatever, but it's basically, look at B. It's a single fraction. I could write 6 as a fraction. When you have a single term equal to a single term, instead of having to clear the denominators by distributing the common denominator, I can do something called cross multiplication. Okay. Have you all heard of that one? Yeah. 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 Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to start off this one. I'm going to come up here. Okay. So I'm going to do B here. Okay. So if I have 2x over 7 equal to 6, I'm going to just say, I'm going to make it look like this. Remember, you can always write something that's in quote-unquote integer form. It's not in fraction form. You can make it look like a fraction by writing it over 1. That's a nifty little trick that you'll use 
quite often, you know, to get around a lot of things. So, um, so to cross multiply, it's basically you'll you'll do like a little crisscross here. Let me um, get a different color here. I'm going to do the the direction I'm doing these lines in is the two things I'm going to multiply. So I'm going to have 2x times 1. Okay, here's my cross multiplication. I'll have 2x times 1. I'm going to write the cross multiplication out here. And then I'll have 6 times 7, which is what? 42, right? So I'm going to want to do, yeah, I'm going to carry them out now. So, so you see that? It's, life is not so bad, if you can see that. You have these big fractions. There are different ways to, to get rid of the fractions in equations when you have a lot of things like that. It may look terrible, but then there's something, trick you can do, and it turns it into something doable, luckily. Mm -hmm. So, Okay, so now just divide by the 2, right? Okay, and what? X is 21. Okay. All right, any questions about Voila. Voila? Cross multiplying. Exactly. Voila. Love, I love it. Cool. <laughs> now right. I'm good. All right. So I want y'all to take a minute. I want y'all to try E. Okay? E. All right. That's really funny. So I'm going to pause the recording for a sec. And the guys are going to try E. And every, anyone watching it, I want y'all to try E. Pause the recording and try E. This one. 3X. Minus 1 over 5 equal to x plus 3 over 3. Okay. Okay, so here is the problem that uh, we were, you guys were working on. So we're supposed to solve this one. Okay, that's E. <clears throat> so we're going to try cross multiplying. And I gave the guys a hint uh, when the video was paused. I said to put the binomials that are in those numerators put them in parentheses right away before you try cross multiplying. Anytime you have something like, like this is called a binomial, two terms, you need to go ahead and put it in parentheses because nine times out of ten as we move along in our class, this thing, these are their own animals. These are like having a 3x or a 5x up there. Okay, because they're terms and they have to, the, the whole, that whole structure, that whole expression kind of acts like its own its own unit when it comes to mm -hmm. performing the different operations we have to do. So let's cross multiply. So we'll go here and here, right? So we'll have 5 will be multiplied times x plus 3. It doesn't matter which side you, you do. You could have done the 3 on that side. Yeah. It's been fine. Works out the same. So 3 times 3x three minus 1. Okay. So hopefully you guys have something similar to that. Yeah. Good. Okay, so now we're going to do this. We're going to have what? What are we going to do? We're going to distribute. Well, yeah, distribute. distribute. And then on yeah. the left side, you would have 5x plus 15. 15. Good job. Yes. 5x plus 15. Okay, what about the right side? It would be 9x minus 3. Minus 3? Yep. You got it. You both got it. Very good. So 9x minus 3. Very good. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and get my x's over to the left and my constant terms to the right. It doesn't matter, positive, negative. That's not going to be a big worry right now. Okay. So I'm going to subtract 9x, subtract 9x. Just so what you do to one side, you must do it to the other side. It's a balance. The equal sign, guys, is a scale, okay? Here's my little scale, okay? And you need to keep it balanced, okay? <laughs> so keep the scale balanced, right? Okay, let's go back down. Do your math, okay? That was me telling you all do your math. Okay, so here we go. So now we're going to have negative 4x plus 15 equal to negative 3. Y'all agree with that? Yes. Good. Okay. So, uh, and you don't have to agree with me. And by the way, I'm very human. I, I'll make a mistake here and there, too. So, luckily, we haven't. Had, it's not happened yet. But look, if I do, tell me. I'm not. I'm not gonna fuss someone for telling me. Look what I did there. I'm like talking and not watching where I'm writing my next step. 
Okay, so negative 15 minus 15 minus 15. Okay, so here we go. And so notice it canceled here. So I'm negative 4x is equal to negative 18. And finally, what do I need to do? Just divide by negative, by negative 4. Yep, you got it. Divide by negative 4. Okay, so x is equal to, and so here we just want to reduce. And we have a negative divided by a negative. That's going to make it positive, right? Now, both 18 and 4, both are divisible by 2, right? So I can do this. I can say that 2 goes into 4 how many times? 2 goes into 4 twice. twice. 2 goes into 18, 9, right? So that's kind of what, mm -hmm. that's what I'm going to have for my solution there, okay? Here's my solution. And, of course, you can check it. <clears throat> because of time right now, what we do to check it, we would go back in and plug a 9 halves in for x back into the original problem. And so, um, actually, one of the first mm -hmm. steps, actually, first or second step, plug your 9 halves in. You're looking for a true statement or, you know, or if it's false, you got it wrong. <laughs> Here's, I tell you what, see this, <laughs> this problem right here, 9 minus 5x equal to negative 6? Let me do that uh, one really quickly, and I'll show you guys. It, it's going to be a little shorter for time's sake. This will be quicker for me to show you how to so, how to check your work after. You in, The great thing about, about math in this class, guys, is that you can you almost like you have your own key you there's always a check there's always a way to check your work okay so we want to go ahead and subtract nine from both sides on this one okay so we're going to move that over here so negative 5x is equal to what negative 15 okay and now negative 5 is multiplied times x so to get it off of the x to get x alone you need to divide that and don't forget your negative sign. Okay, you got to divide off that too. Okay, so that all cancels, and I have x is equal to what? Positive 3. Okay, and you don't have to write your positive. I just wanted to write it just to kind of, you know, illustrate that these two negatives cancel each other out. All right, so to check this solution. So to check this, what we're going to do, let me go ahead and write check. Okay. We're going to go back and we're going to write 9 minus 5. Instead of x, I'm going to open a set of parentheses. Okay? And I'm going to go back in and I'm going to plug in the solution I got. Okay? So I'll plug in my 3. Okay? So, in the, so you simplify that left side. You have 9 minus 15 here. And so what? Negative 15 mi plus 9 is negative 6. Bring down the right side, right? Or simplify it if it needs to be simplified. So see what we have here is true. Okay, so if you're checking your work and you get a true statement, then yes, we have a solution. Okay, so x equal to 3 is a solution. Okay? Okay, you may even have a problem in homework or wherever where you're asked to um, Verify that something is a solution to an equation, and that's how you would do it. Plug that solution in, and if you have a true statement, it is a solution. If you get a false statement, it's not. Okay? Okay, dokie, any questions about any of this? Okay. Uh, no, no I, I think we're good. All right, so let's take a look at some word problems. Let's go on to that then. Okay, so we... <laughs> Looks like you guys asked me for some age word problems. So let's go ahead and look yeah. at that. Okay. The the biggest thing, there's there's actually a video and I can put that in the in the journal forum. There's something that and I'll give this to you right here too. I'll I'll just do the, the steps here. The steps to approaching a word problem are pretty standard. They they're pretty much the same for all word problems, no matter what type of word problem they are, okay? Okay, so like, let's see, let me make this zoom in a little bit for us. Okay, so uh, I need to get rid of that. <laughs> I'm trying to make my pen write, it wouldn't write. So the steps to word problems, okay? 
to um, solving word problems or application problems, but we'll just call them word problems. Word problems. I should have like a little echo thing of word problems, word problems, word problems, 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 problems. Yeah, problems. yeah exactly. Problems, problems. <laughs> no, it, but, but they're not. Then we after this is not going to be a problem anymore, right? Right. Okay. Right. <laughs> right. No, it doesn't have to be. The key is this. Here's the key. I'm giving you guys the secret right now. Okay. You want to read and reread slowly don't try to rush through them okay you want to reread i mean read carefully read carefully them the word problems no reread carefully okay so here's the deal number 2 what you're going to do is you're going to take it one after you've read and you reread the problem you're going to dissect it okay phrase by phrase okay once you because when you read and reread by at that point you should know what it's asking you for you should know at least at least at this point you should know the type of word problem it is right is it a mixture problem is it age related coin related whatever dissected phrase by phrase okay this is how you're going to interpret it into the language of algebra Okay. <clears throat> okay. The things you're going to write down at first, you don't need to write away. You, you, no one expects you to write away, know what the equation is going to be right off the bat. Okay. Nobody does. Okay. Not even your pretty experienced people. What you're going to do next is you're going to know, you need to know what is it asking you to do. What? Okay. So, um, you want to write down or figure out, write down what is it asking for, okay? Okay, let's see what the problem is asking for. Okay. <clears throat> okay, like for example, somebody's age or such and such, okay? Okay, so then the next thing you want to do, number four, we want to represent the different factors in the problem. Okay, we want to represent um, our variables, basically. Represent, and I'm going to put slash, uh, name your variables. Typically, you're going to let the smaller, I'm going to put this typically, you're going to let the smaller numbers be the X. And then all the larger numbers are larger, for example, the ages, the older people will be based on that. Okay, so like the younger guy in the, in the age problems will be X. Let X be whomever. Let's see, like if we have, look, number two, Janessa is half Kendra's age. Janessa is the younger one, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so she's going to be the X. Okay, Kendra, if she's half of Kendra's age, what's Kendra going to be? Kendra then will be what? Twice her age. You see that? So Kendra's based mm -hmm. on her. So you want to base the larger variables, you want to base those on the smaller one. So you want to let, okay, X will be the smaller amounts in the problem, okay? that's really right there what I just wrote that X is going to be the smaller amounts okay that's a big one right there you definitely will make a lot of leeway knowing that okay <clears throat> actually let me not put the parentheses the uh, larger the larger amounts in the problem or ages or whatever it is are based on that okay they build on that on the smaller on that X okay 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 and then of course finally number five you want to use those representations to write your equation okay 
and that will get to through experience. We're going to have to just, I'll show you that. Once you have your equation, you're going to solve it. You're not done, though. Once you solve your equation, sure, you're almost there. But you're not done when you solve your equation. Finally, you have to make sure you have answered your question. Because I don't know if you guys noticed that. You could solve your equation and put feet after the answer or whatever. But oftentimes, it's asking you for the difference between that solution and another number or something to that effect. Make sure you answer the question, okay? Especially on multiple choice, right? Because you know one of those choices yeah. is going to be that X after the solution to the equation. <laughs> and then another choice yeah, exactly. is going to be the real answer to the question. So be careful, you know, answer the question. And then you're pretty much done, okay? So let's leave it at that. And, um... Let's look at one of these age-related problems. Let's go ahead and look at number two, since I, I called that one out. Okay. And uh, let me go ahead and, and we'll make it a little neater. So, um, Janisa is half Kendra's age. <clears throat> okay, we're up here in number two. Okay, so right here, okay, let me just read through. In 24 years, comma, the sum of their ages will be 135. How old is Janisa now? So the question is, how old is Janisa? Here's my cue, my question. Okay. So, um, okay. So what we're going to do is right here, we're going to represent their ages now. Is This is what they are now. So typically with age problems, you're going to have something now, something in the past or the future. This is going to be in 24 years, right? So right now, let's stay here for now, though. Right now, okay, Janisa, okay, we'll let J, Janisa, let's let her be a X, okay? And half of Kendra's age, she, she's the younger one, right? So Kendra, we could represent Kendra with, what did we say, you guys? 2X. That makes Kendra twice her age, right. Okay, so this is what how their ages look now. Okay, in 24 years, what are they going to look like? That's this sentence, okay? So this is the next part in 24 years. So see, in age problems, we got a now column to represent the variables. The variables represent a now. And then the next thing, we're going to take those guys. And in 24 years, the sum of their ages will be... 135. First off, though, in 24 years, how old will Janisa be? She'll be how old she was plus another 24, right? Mm -hmm. Kendra will be whatever she was plus 24. So you got to watch out. Okay. So, okay, in 24 years, take it. That's just one bit at a time. See, we're dissecting it. And so now in this next little area, this is the equation here. And pretty much all of them, you can make a little table like this. Don't don't put two. Okay, so far I've had two rows. Now this one, I'm going to leave it kind of wide open so I have room for my equation. So now in 24 years, we want to take this in 24 years column and write the, the sum of those two ages there is going to be 135, right? So x plus 24 and 2x plus 24, when I add those two amounts together, will equal 135. So x plus 24. I really don't need the parentheses. I guess I'll just get rid of them because we're just adding. We're not multiplying anything. And then plus at 2x plus 24. Y'all agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what I need to do here is just combine like terms. And go ahead and solve this thing. And I'm going to take it to the side over here and solve it where we have a little room. So we'll combine like terms. We have 1x and 2x, right? This guy and this guy. So we'll have 3x. Then we have 24 and 24 plus 48 is 135. Okay. Subtract 48. 
And um, I'm just going to bust out my calculator since I am so sleepy. So, um, long day. I feel like that reminds me yesterday. Jose and I had a, some funny, funny, uh, remember? Oh, yeah, we had, had it. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have, yeah. we'll see if anybody can, uh, can realize my, what I did with my, the magic of, uh, editing through the magic of television. I had a, <laughs> I'll just tell you guys, people re recording this, don't forget though. We, we had a brain, brain fart yesterday. And, um, oh, I love those. Oh, I love it. We both had the same one, though. I had to. I was like, let me pause the video. Don't let them know this. <laughs> I did it already. I told them the truth. Now it's 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 true. <laughs> it's out. It's okay. Again, human. But uh, no. the, the magician revealed its secret. That's right. <laughs> Through the magic of television, we made a miracle happen. No, okay. So, guys, all right, here we go. 135 minus 48 on both sides, right? I got to subtract that from both sides. So, what do we have here? So, we have 3x is equal to 87. Is that what you got? Y'all back me yeah. up now. And then you at home, too, whoever's watching the review and the recording. Back me up. You should have your calculators out. Working this problem out on your paper. Don't just sit there and watch us work it. You need to be writing this stuff down. And if you work ahead of us, write the next one down. Do that one. You know. And if it's if you work a problem out that I don't do in this review, and you see it on this this screen, and let me know. I'll 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 make I'll check your work. Just come ask me anytime. Okay. Divide by three, and so that would be what twenty nine. So that now really I should put this as a final step. Is it feasible? Janice is 29. It's possible. That is an age, okay? And Kendra could be twice that age, okay? So this is Janice now. Wait, this is Janice. Yeah, this is Janice's now age. Okay, so 29 years is Janice's age now. <clears throat> Okay, and that's all it's asking us for. Where did she go? I don't know. No, I'm kidding. It's right here. Okay, guys, um, any questions on this? Uh, no. Uh, no, it's pretty good. You can do another one. You want to do one more? Yes, please. Uh, yeah. Sure. Okay. Let's see. Um, Y'all want to pick one of these? Pick one of the ones that you see, one, three, or four. They're all about the same uh, um, difficulty. Um, what do we do for Sure. Yeah. That sounds good. Okay, we'll do four. Okay, and you guys can do one in three. Yeah, Maria. Okay. Maria. So Emily is 26 right. years. What's that? What's going on? What happened? No, I'll just, I'll just agree with you. Okay, cool. Good Good job. <laughs> I'll pay you later. <laughs> I'll pay you later. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Emily good job for is <laughs> Extra credit right there. Yep. It's the magic of television. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> No, okay, Emily's 26 years older than her daughter, Maria, right? Okay, so, you now look, and this is, the, is, this is now, right? So here's the now, okay? Remember the now, and then the next column's going to be at another time frame, right? In 10 years, so this will be like in 10 years, right? We'll say yeah. a then. We'll call it a now and a then, okay? Column. So a now and a then column. Okay, and so that goes all the way up to here. And also the then column, the then sentence is also where we're going to get our equation. Okay, so keep that in mind. So they're asking how old are Maria and Emily in the now, though, okay, ultimately. Okay, so let's make our little table. We have a now for their ages. Okay, and we're going to have a then. Okay. And then we're going to have a little space for our equation. My little shorthand for equation is EQN, by the way. If y'all see me write EQN, it means equation. All righty. Okay, let me write it a little neater, too. Okay. All right, so now, okay, so we have, uh, which one is younger? Emily is 26 years older than her daughter, Maria. So Maria will be my x, right, or my base variable, right? Uh -huh. Okay, and so Emily, I'll just call her M for now, 
is 26 years older than Maria. So how do I represent her age? Oh, it would be X plus 26. You got it. Yeah, I'm seeing if y'all are awake. <laughs> okay. We're, we're here. Then, <laughs> in 10 years, so this is, in, when I write then, that's just going to be adding 10 years, right? If it would have said t 10 years ago, I would subtract 10, right? Y'all catching my drift? So be careful yes. on that. It's not always just adding into the future. So, yeah. So X plus 10. And we're going to take X plus 26. And we're going to add 10 to that, right? So really we'll have what? X plus 36 for M. Okay. Look, I'm going to put these guys in parentheses, my two little binomials. Okay. So that's their ages in 10 years. And so let's see what is the relationship of their ages in 10 years. So in 10 years, Emily will be three times as old as Maria. Okay. How do we represent that? Okay. So Emily's age is X plus 10. Emily will be three times as old as Maria. Here's the deal. You're going to want to put the three times on M's age because it's saying Emily's three times older as, Mar as old as Maria. But be careful of that, okay? It's This is where it's kind of backwards. We we'll swap them up here. You really want to, you're trying to bring the small, You remember the scale has to balance with an equation, right? We have an equal sign. Uh -huh. So the smaller one is going to be multiplied times three, okay? All right, so be careful on that. So Maria is the, the, the younger one, right? So we have 3 times x plus 10, okay, to bring her up to be equal to her mother's age in 10 years. Okay, y'all catch my draft on that? Yeah. Hopefully that made sense, y'all. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so let's go ahead and distribute, and then we'll, get, we'll isolate x, and we'll have a solution here. So we have 3x plus 30. Okay, and then x plus 36, okay. So let's go ahead and start moving uh, the x values to the left and the constant terms to the right. All right, I'll go ahead and move this 30 over. Okay, so it'll cancel here, right? Make a little room. Okay, so we have 3x is equal to, what's this going to be? We're going to have what? x plus 6. Y'all agree? Now let's move this x term here. This this is a 1x, right? It's understood that there's a 1 in front of that x. So we're going to subtract it from both sides, minus x, minus x. So it'll cancel here. Okay? Cancels to 0, excuse me. Okay, it should be a 0 there, sorry. It cancels. Okay, so then we have 3 minus 1 here. So we'll have what? 2x is equal to 6. Y'all with me? Yeah. Yes. Good. Okay. And so now what do I do? You divide it by, by two? Yeah, because it's multiplied. Good. <clears throat> okay. And so the twos cancel, and x is three. Let me ask you guys this. What if I had, I'm, not, I'm just going to get you guys to solve a couple of small equations. Oh, by the way, okay, wait, I'm sorry. Maria is... At present, Maria is three. Maria's age now, right? Let me answer the question, sorry. Now, and then x plus 26, right? So x plus 26, or what? 29 is Emily's age now. That's what they're asking us for here. Okay, we're done. All right, so let me let me kind of uh, get a separate color here. Okay, so just sidebar, just to kind of wake you guys up. Solve these small equations for me, okay? Let's have a yeah. negative two thirds x is equal to um, four. Okay, and then b. Let's see. Um, Absolute value of x plus 3 is equal to 6. All right. So let's look at a first, okay? 
Now, so far, we've kind of just seen something multiply times x in that final step, right? And we divide it. We took the inverse operation, right? We divided it. What about let's take the multiplicative inverse and multiply it times both sides, right? In other words, if I have a fraction on the front of x multiplied, what I need to do is multiply both sides by the reciprocal of two, negative two-thirds. So the reciprocal, what is the reciprocal of negative two-thirds, okay? So in symbolism, if I wanted to ask you that, I would do this. What is the reciprocal of negative two-thirds? That would be what? Negative three halves, right? That's the answer. Okay, I don't need to write a positive one on it. That's understood. So we want to take this value and multiply it times both sides of this equation. So I'm going to have negative 3 halves. Notice the sign stays with the num with this reciprocal. Okay? So we don't change the sign at all whenever we do reciprocal. Okay, so now we have what? Let's write the rest of the, the, the existing problem. Okay. Okay, so now what happens is we have these negatives cancel, right? It's positive. Twos cancel, threes cancel, and I'm left with That's X, six. right? Here, the two will cancel with the four, leaving me a two up here. So I have negative three times positive two, or negative six. So see that inverse can come in a lot of different forms. We can have the multiplicative inverse, which is what I just used. The inverse operation is what we've been saying. It's when you see something multiplied, like here, and we just divided it on both sides. We did that, you know. So um, just kind of be aware. It could some the similar or same concepts will sneak up on you, but look differently. Is what I'm getting at. Okay. So that's why it's good to practice different forms of, a, of the same problem or write things different ways. Okay. Okay, so how about this absolute value equation? To set this thing up, we have to kind of do this. I want you guys to kind of remember that when we set up an absolute value equation to, into two, se separate it into two, this amount or whatever's written inside this absolute value symbol does not change in either case, okay? And here's what I'm talking about. I'm kind of going along to, before we do more word problems or, or go on or run out of time, I want to hit some highlights with you guys because um, uh, there's some important stuff you guys need to know. You're on a need-to-know basis. Y'all hear this car shrieking outside? That's weird. Yeah, pretty far. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, so x plus 3, you can write that twice, okay? You can write r and write x plus 3 again equal to something. Notice I wrote the exact same thing twice, so I don't make it minus 3 or anything. I, I don't change this value that's inside the absolute value. So, but, but what changes what's on the right when you set it up? In other words, what's in here could be a negative 6 or a positive 6, right? The absolute value, if this were a negative 6 inside of here, if x plus 3 were negative 6, right, you could have that in there. It would be a positive 6 answer. If x plus 3 was a 6 in here, if this turned into a 6, I would still get the absolute value of 6, and so I'd have the right, that's what it would be, right? So in here, inside the absolute value, I could have a negative 6, as this is, right? And it could also be a positive 6. That's how, that's why we do that, the setup of these problems the way we do them. Okay, y'all with me so far, though? Yeah. yeah we're good. Okay, y'all awake? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so subtract 3 from both sides, and x is negative 9, right? So we have to kind of, anytime we have to separate a problem out like this, you have to make sure you solve both parts, you know. Let's go solve this one independently. X is 3. So these are my two solutions, okay. All right. Um, what about other absolute value equations? Um, you guys are going to notice, make sure you check in the homework that I, I posted 
<laughs> I don't even know. I'm about to post it if I haven't posted it yet. Um, all your homework solutions will be up by the by the night. They're all ready to go. I just ran out of time, so I had to come do this. But um, within within minutes of me finishing this this review, you're gonna have all your solution keys up, okay? And so I was looking at the absolute value ones that were assigned to you in homework. Those are very appropriate for you to review. And so what you could you could very well go and pick some problems right around the um, the homework assignment problems, and uh, those would be great to review. Um, that would be perfect for you guys to go and check out. If you have any questions with those, you're welcome to get in touch with me. Uh, there is one little group, the very end of the absolute value uh, equation homework. There were a few of them that kind of looked like this, and I'll, I'll just show you. Might have had something like this. Okay, um, Maybe there's a 5 out in the front, and maybe a minus 2 equal to 10. Okay? When you have something like this, what you need to do first is get this absolute value portion of the equation by itself. So slowly you need to isolate this absolute value sign, the part in the absolute value symbols. Okay, so pretend it's x, like if we would have something like this, 5x minus 2 equal to 10, so to speak. You know what I mean? If it's an mm -hmm. X is the absolute value, what would you do? You would start by what? Adding two to both sides, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so start there. Mm -hmm. And okay. you divide by five. Right? Exactly. Very good. Yes, you got it. Y'all got this. Y'all gonna do fine. It's all okay. good. So, <laughs> what? What's that? I was like, it's all good. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It really is. Look at that. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> I'm such a nerd. Okay, guys. So, there you go. Divide by five on both sides. And now you got your absolute value problem that you're kind of used to seeing, right? Twelve fifths. So, what if it's a fraction? It's, it's there. It's positive. So, you can, you can keep going. So, this guy doesn't change. So, we have 2x. I'm going to go ahead and just set this up and leave it be and let you guys work on it on your own. So, we have a negative 12 fifths, right? So as it is, you don't change this part. So that goes over here again. The only thing that changes is this, the negative right side or the positive right side, right? So 2x plus 3 could be positive, negative 12 fifths or positive 12 fifths. Okay. I'm going to let you guys solve that, those guys independently on your own. I'll let you work on it because for lack of time because it's... um. We're kind of way into the session now. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, so I think I have about time for, like, one more problem. What do you guys need to see? What is the worst thing that you've worked on? Like, maybe um, that's what's getting your goat, you know, what, what gets you stuck? Uh, for me, I'm pretty good so far. I mean, it was pretty self-explanatory, everything. Well, I mean, we can't all be, like, yeah, awesome, you know, like, perfectly ready. No, I'm just kidding. I'm joking. <laughs> Come on, no, there's going to be something that's your worst thing. Everybody's got a, a um, medical thorn in their side, right? Maybe you could use an example with the inequalities, maybe? Yes, I can definitely do that. Good one. Why not throw an inequality in there? Why not? Well, and, you know, I was thinking that. Why not? Why not <laughs> do that? Exactly. <laughs> so, and I, mean, I bet everybody on the video is thinking that, too. Everybody's watching the video going, why is not she throw an inequality in there? So good job. See, I wasn't here this time. Yep. Good thinking, man. All right, so let's take a look. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so um, <laughs> all righty. Let's see where are they? Here we are, right here. I'm just gonna look for one for an idea, and I'll just copy it down. Okay, one thing I had um, I saw in the post lecture discussion, and I tried to comment on this, but the symbols. Here's some I'm going to take right here. The symbols, I'm, what I'm going to do when I solve these is I'm going to show you the solution graphically. Of course, in the inequality symbols, and I'm going to show it to you in uh, interval notation too. Okay, just to kind of give you, you know, all the ways, the possible ways the solution sets could be represented. Okay, 
So, um, <clears throat> okay, I'm like, I'm going to pause the video for a second while I pull some of these up. Oh, I got you. Okay, so while you guys are working on your final tomorrow morning, the final exam will open, and it will be due that night. And that will be like that for all your exams. On the day of your exam, it opens up in the morning, and it's due by the nighttime at, at 11.55 p.m. So, um, you know, I'll, I'm generally available. During tests especially, make sure you guys text me. That's the quick thing. That's the quick thing. Be in touch with me um, on exam days especially. Make sure you text or call if you run into any trouble, okay? So I don't want you to sit there confused, wasting time. It, it, I'd rather you ask me a question, you know, in case I can answer you. If it's, a, if it's about the course, the topics in the course, I'd rather you ask it in case it's something I can at least maybe send you in the right direction or at least it, at worst tell you you'll have to read it carefully for yourself would be the polite way to say you should know that you know <laughs> so I mean you know I'd rather you ask than not you know what I mean because you never know I mean really not enough people ask questions okay and if you're not sure about what something is a, a question is asking you for please definitely ask me you know um so you know, d don't sit there like confused. You know, you have your, you have vast resources available to you for an entire day. So y'all should be able to fill in the bubble form. I'm going to have a bubble sheet available. It's going to be multiple choice and it'll be a bubble in form. That'll, um, there'll be a link for the bubble form. Okay. And so, uh, that's basically it. So it's, it's pretty self-explanatory once you open it up okay let's go ahead we're going to get these uh, a couple these and a couple of more uh, inequalities done and then uh, we'll kind of be done there now we only did the age-related tasks but um, there are others in your homework book I highly suggest you guys once again I'm gonna say this go read the the examples in your homework book follow along with them um, there, I added a bunch of those on our YouTube channel. We have uh, those links to YouTube channel. Our, the one I made for y'all with lots of examples in it. There's a lot of word problem examples in there right now. So just, all you got to do is scroll down. You'll see them all. You see coin related tasks, mixture. You see them all in there. There's tons of them. You don't have to go searching too far. I did it all for you. So you have a lot of examples um, available to you. Okay, make sure you practice some of the problems that we didn't cover or we didn't do or assign that are in your homework book. Okay, so let's look at these inequalities though. Okay, so we want to solve inequalities. Let's go ahead and look at this first one. Okay, so you guys worked on it. Y'all finished? Y'all did okay? Got it. All right, cool. So I'll just work it out then and y'all tell me if you got the same thing then. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm going to go ahead and start out by distributing my negative 9 into this x minus 3, 9, negative 9x nine plus 27, and bring down my plus 7, less than or equal to, and I'm going to distribute this negative, or I can say this, I can take the opposite of 10x minus 27. In other words, each of these guys will become the opposite sign. So I'll have negative 10x plus 27. Okay? And so I've distributed, and anytime we distribute, we want to combine like terms. Okay, so I'm going to have negative 9x, and 27 plus 7 is plus 34. Okay, and I'll bring down the rest. Now I can start moving from side to side there. I want my x's on one side and my constant terms on the other. Okay, and so I can add 10x to both sides, for example. Add that down here. Okay, so cancels here, and I end up with, what, 10 minus 9, or just x. Right, plus 34, less than or equal to, and let's see, we have 27 there. Okay, so I'm going to subtract a 34. Nothing I've done so far has would cause my sign to flip. This is, my sign stays the same for all this. Adding, subtracting, you know, or multiplying by a positive number. 
So we're good. Okay, so x is less than or equal to what? Negative 34 plus 27, what? 7? Negative 7. Yeah, negative seven. Good job. Excellent. So let's take a look at this. I, I think that it's worth doing graphically the solutions. Actually, let me go ahead right underneath it, do it right here because of the space for the other problem. It's worth just kind of make a quick thing, put, put your endpoints centered in there somewhere, and then you fill in the side that's what less than. Do the less than part. Don't worry about the equal part yet. So less than negative 7 is left of negative 7, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, it thinks I'm scratching out when I do that. Let me do this. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. There we go. Left of. There we go. That's better. All right. So we can use... To show the, the inclusion, we want to include this because of the or equal sign, the or equal to. This is included, our endpoint, right? You can either do a closed circle, okay, or you could do a bracket, just like you would do interval notation, the bracket. This would include it as well, okay? So you could either bracket it in that direction, or you could just do the closed circle to include it, okay? A filled-in circle would include it. That's graphically. Now, to do interval notation, it kind of helps to have the graphing of the inequality done. Because what's over here? This is negative infinity, right? So you're going to have, there's your two numbers for your interval notation, right? You have negative infinity, comma, negative 7. And the reason the bracket part of this version of the graph is helpful is because you have to bracket your, your negative 7. Infinities always have parentheses, okay? Remember that. That's what I wanted to put in, in the post-lecture in the post -lecture discussion when we were talking about that. So infinities always have uh, parentheses, okay? There's no endpoint to include or exclude. All right, so there you have it. You have the inequality version, you have the graphical, and the interval notation. Any questions about that? Uh, no, we're good. Cool. Okay, so let's take a look at this other problem here, okay? All right, so let's go here. Did y'all do this one or no? Yeah, yes. we did. You did good, okay. So, all right, so I'm going to start with distribution and combine like terms. Let me just go to town with it. So I'll have 12 minus 6x less than, greater than or equal to negative 7x plus 7 and plus 5. That's crazy looking out there. Okay, plus 5. Okay, so I'm just going to bring these guys down. There's nothing to combine. So bring it down. I'm going to work on the right here. Negative 7x, and so we have to combine those to be 12. Okay. So I want my constants on one side. doesn't matter what side you bring it over, but in, when we're all done, in the end, we do want our x's on the left. This is where moving your x to the left in, in equation solving, all that comes from here. So we, we read these things from left to right. So we do like to have our x on the left for inequalities, okay? Remember that. But I'm going to show you guys a trick. I'm going to, let's just say somehow I do a problem and I end up with my x's on the right. So I'm going to make that happen here. I'm just going to go ahead and do that just to kind of show you guys what to do with that at the end. Okay. So I'm going to bring this 12 over here, greater than or equal to. I'm going to have a negative x plus 12. Okay. And so what if I subtract 12, right? I want to move my constants to the other side. Okay, so look what happens, 0, 0, right? Now look, I scratched both of these out. What's left over here on this side? Is it nothing? Zero. It would just be 0? It would be 0. Don't forget what you're doing when they cancel addition, subtraction type of canceling. It is 0 that's left over. Okay, good job. We just don't always put zeros because we usually have something left there, you know. So it's 0. So we have 0 greater than or equal to negative x. That is so weird. Just kidding. It's not that weird. Okay. 
So let's let's kind of put this X term on the left. Let's flip this thing around, okay? And you have to be careful. It's like if this were were uh, imprinted on a floor, a welcome mat at your house, okay? And you grabbed it here and you flipped it over. You flipped it right top to bottom, okay? What would happen? I would have would have what? We would have negative X. This guy would be going, try, this, I used to learn this was an alligator trying to eat the bigger portion. So this guy would still want to eat the zero, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it would flip over and that's what it would look like, okay? So um, we haven't done the flipperoo that involves multiplication just yet. That, that will happen in a minute, though. Okay, but we want that X to be on the left, okay? So is this good? Can I leave this like this, the X, the negative on the X? Yeah, okay, like that? I should just highlight it and be done with it. Is this okay? Can I leave that like that? Yeah, well, what I did, I, I instead of minusing X to the, to the right side, I uh -huh. plus 7X to the left side. And at oh, the end, can. Gave yeah, me you can totally do that. You're going to end up with a, with a good answer. That's right. Yeah. You, I'm yeah, just yeah, doing yeah. it differently yeah. to show you this, what I'm doing here, these last two things. Step right there, right? Yeah. Because you can do different things. You know, there's different things that might happen that, you know, you'll have to do some of these little tricks I'm showing you. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the deal, okay? To get the negative off the X, I can't just take it off the X. In, if it was an equation, I could just say I could take it the opposite of both sides. It'd be done. But I'm going to have to multiply both sides by a negative or take the opposite of both sides. But let's just say I'm multiplying both sides by a negative 1. Actually, I'm going to do it in a separate step because of the sign direction change. So I'm going to take a negative 1 and multiply it times both sides. Because when I finish solving, I need X to have nothing on. I don't need, I can't have that negative on it. That's what's going on. So negative value is being multiplied on both sides of my equation. This is when the sign swaps direction, okay? This is when it becomes a greater than instead of a less than. Okay? Y'all see that? Because I'm multiplying both sides by negative value, or it's multiply or divide. This is the only difference between this and equation solving. Okay, that is when my sign changes. That's the actual step that that occurs in. Okay, so um, let's go on. Let's kind of see what happens. So we have now I'm gonna have two negatives making me a positive x, right? Greater than or equal to, and this is just gonna stay zero. Okay. Now your solution set totally changed, mm -hmm. although you know even though it didn't look like much happened there. Okay. So let's take a look. Okay, here's graphically what's going on. My zero's in the middle. X is going to be greater than or equal to. So greater than is to the right of. So I should need a shade to the right of. See that? <laughs> let me make it, let me do what I did earlier. You just get a different color. So is my circle going to be filled in or open or like an empty circle? If I do the circle. Filled in. In. It'll be filled in because it's included. Good. Okay. Let's see. There we go. And I'm going to shade to the right, right? Because it's greater than. Okay. Alrighty. And so now I'm going to do interval notation. Like I said earlier, this kind of, by doing the graphical, showing the graphical solution, it it really makes doing the, the um, interval notation lots easier, I think. You're going to have this, right? You're going to have everything you need is there. You know, especially if you use the brackets and parentheses in your graphical. You totally can, by the way. Again, I'm going to say, if you wanted to do this graphing, the graphical representation with a bracket instead of a closed circle, you can totally do that. If we would have... Um, so that's done. Let me just leave this one behind and show you this. If I had, say, x is less than, so let's just use 6, excluded 6, right? So 6 is not included in this solution that I just wrote up here. 
to you show this graphically, six in the center, less than is left of, right? Okay. Now, to exclude the six, we would use an open circle, right? Empty, meaning there's nothing there, right? It's, it's excluded. Okay. Or we could use a parenthesis opened in that direction because the parenthesis is the excluding cap on the end, right? You all with yeah. me on that? Yeah, I got you. Catch my drift? Okay, cool. So this and let me just write it, both of them. So if I did this, it's the same thing. This is the same thing. Okay. Different textbooks uh, will write that different ways. At any rate, the interval notation is the same, though. Okay, and we use a parenthesis because 6 is excluded. Okay. Y'all understanding what makes them included or excluded, right? Yep. Yeah, I wrote, no, there's no equal under that less than there. Okay. All right, cool. All right, let's do a, one compound inequality, and we'll call it a night. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go look at one. I'll just borrow one real quick. <laughs> the uh, What I'm talking about is um, the uh, intervals. You could have... I guess what's considered a three, um, there it is, a three-sided inequality to solve, okay? Or it could be broken into two different things like in these problems here. Let me uh, zoom in on that. And probably, problems probably would come from some this little area in the book. Okay, what area, Karen? Let me, <laughs> hold one second. All right, so yeah, we're... Here it is. Okay. So here we are. Yeah, page 96 is full of wonderful options for you to practice. Okay. So what you're seeing there in the beginning of the page, these are going to be intervals and conjunctions. They can be written in one statement like that, but it's got one, two, three sides. And these are disjunctions. They, they have to be written separately. I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Sorry. Um, there we go. Come back to me now. Okay. Disjunctions. Okay. It's just unions there. All right. So let's kind of look at one of these. Mainly what you probably would see, it would be one of these, though. If I had to pick just one, I'd probably put one of these on there. So I'm going to pick one of these. Um, probably, let me take number, let's go ahead and look at number H. Number H. I like it. <laughs> Let's look at number H, guys. Okay. Let me see if I can just copy and paste it. I bet I can do that. It might work. And let's do that. It doesn't work for like a bunch of them. It won't work the same. Look, see what it did. How nice. Okay, hold on, guys. Hold on. Just a second. Magic of modern fun here. Oh, yeah, I know. I so, um, okay. So here's how this will go. Let's take a look at this one, okay? Now we're going to be asked to solve, okay, the inequality again. So we're solving. And so here is what I'm talking about. This is called a conjunction, okay? And really it's an interval, okay, conjunction, okay? Okay, now... For this, this is similar to when we have an equation with that's filled with the fractions. What do we do with the denominators to clear the fractions out? We want to find the least common multiple of the denominators, right? Five, uh -huh. So 5, 15, and 3, they all have 15 in common. So that's what we can do. We can take a 15 and distribute it into all three. Instead of two sides, instead of both sides, now I'm going to say all three sides are all sides. You see, I'm going to have this one. Well, less than or equal to. I'm going to have 15. Oh, not 12. Excuse me. Yeah, you know it's time for me to go get some food. <laughs> oh, some gumbo. You're hungry. <laughs> I need some gumbo. Filet gum. No, I'm just kidding. I'm joking. I'm being stereotypical Cajun girl over here. <laughs> so, um, uh, let's see. All right, so we have, here's the original problem. This is what I wanted to do and to show you guys that. See, so we'll have the 5x minus 7 over 15. 
11 thirds, okay? So you can kind of see the original problem here, okay? All right, so the 15's purpose in life is to get rid of fractions for us. So we like the least common multiple of the denominators trick. We use it a lot of times in this class, so get used to that. It's not going away, okay, y'all? So try get used to finding the, the least common multiple of the denominators. That's the most efficient common denominator you can use. So 5 goes into itself. The 15, 3 times. I'm going to come back across and I'm going to do the multiplication in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and do all the cancellations first. Okay, so these guys cancel out all the way. 3 goes into itself once into 15 five times so now what I want to do is come kind of come back here and find the survivors so to speak I have 3 times negative 3 so that's what's going to populate that side right so I have what negative 9 okay and so over here notice it's just 1 times 5x minus 7 if you ever have anything besides 1 left over be careful with the distribution okay so be careful with that so we but it's just 1 so we can just write the 5x minus 7 like that so now we have less than or equal to okay and then 5 times 11 right see the 5's left here and we have the 11 here so we have 55 Okay, so now uh, what I'm doing, and so far when you solve something, you wanted to get x isolated on the left, right? Okay, or equal to less than whatever it is. We had x on the right, on, excuse me, on the left. Did I say the right side? Sorry, guys. We wanted to get x by itself on the left. In something like this, however, it's a conjunction like this. We're trying to get x isolated in the center, okay? Here is where we want x to end up here, okay? So what I'm going to do is start adding off and then dividing. I'm going to add off first. Okay, so I'm going to take 7. I'm actually going to add it to three sides of this inequality. Are you all with me? Yes. yes. Okay, so let me do that. Okay, and make some room. Negative 9 plus 7, so we have negative 2. Less than or equal to, and so we have 5x. Notice the x is coming right along in the middle. 55 plus 7 is what? 62. 62. Good job. All right, so now I'm going to do what? To get x by itself. Finally, or, yeah, I need to get it to shed that 5, which is multiplied, so I'm going to divide, right? Now, typically, if the signs were going to swap direction, this is the step it would do it in, but it's, it's positive, so we're good. Signs will stay the same. But I'm letting you know that, that would, this would be the step. You have to beware the very last step when you're multiplying or dividing all sides by a negative value. Okay, But we're lucky this time, so we just can divide off our 5 on all sides. And let's go down last step and see what we got. Negative two-fifths. And yeah, it doesn't have to be pretty, right? It's just going to have to be, it just needs fraction. to be right. <laughs> What's that? Come it again. is an ugly fraction right it there. It is, it is, but they're reduced. Look, see how they're reduced? As long as they are reduced, and really, that's fine. As long as your, your fractions are completely reduced, all simplified, that's fine. This is a good answer, okay? You see the negative makes sense. Negatives are less than the positives. That makes sense, correct? You want to make yes. sure that makes sense, right? So you don't have any sign rule error. Now let's take a look at this graphically, okay? Here's what this guy's going to look like. We'll have, and you don't even have to do this perfectly. You just need to do your two end points, right? Your negative two-fifths is left of 62-fifths. Really basically just get your bearings. Now, it's or equal to, right? So the or equal to that's attached to the negative fifth side, I mean the two-fifth side, that should be closed, right, or filled in, I should say, including it. This side over here is also included. And so if you kind of take it a bit at a time and just read, say, <clears throat> so you just read like this part of it. 
your X is going to be above, right? X is going to be, read it like in this direction. X is going to be bigger than negative two-fifths, right? So you're going to shade in over there, right? You're going to shade in above that. If you read it from the other side, from this direction, right? X is less than 62 fifths. So it's over here. It's less than below it, right? Mm -hmm. Y'all with me on that? So you can see that this gets shaded between these two points and we're done. So that's the graphical representation of a conjunction. It fills in between two endpoints. That's pretty much it. Now look, the, the interval notation is this. Because they're included, we'll use brackets, right? And we'll say, okay, one of the endpoints is negative two-fifths through 62-fifths bracket. Okay. Now my son is about to get, like, fussed. And so I better go. He's hungry. So am I. All right. are, we, are, we, are there any questions, you guys? Uh, no, we're all good, Miss Smith. Y'all no. got this. Y'all are going to do fine. And, um, look, Victoria, you call me tomorrow. You, to call me tomorrow and we'll catch up. On, okay. I got your message finally. And uh, anybody, you guys, anybody taking the test, all the people watching the recording, you can do this, okay? Don't let yourself get nervous. Just If you have a question, it's better to ask it, you know, than not, okay? Be safe, okay? If something I can answer, I will. And if it's something I'm not supposed to answer, I'll, I'll politely tell you that I can't answer it. It can't hurt to ask, okay? Really, it can't. So, you guys, best of luck. I'm going to be around tomorrow. I'll be at my computer and with my phone charged up. And um, I'm going to post all the rest of the solutions now. I forgot I need to do that. So, all right, you guys. Y'all have a good evening. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Good night, guys.